Hello there, everybody. I'm Mr. Game and Pie, and this is Let's Play. A game by THQ. THQ. It's a banjo game, everybody. It's also by Rareware. It's Banjo Kazooie Grunty's Revenge. Yeah, this is basically the last Banjo Kazooie game. That's just a regular type of Banjo Kazooie game. This happens between Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie. Whereas Banjo Tooie uh, occurred two years after the events of Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Kazooie Grundy's Revenge here ha occurs two months later. This game was actually made after Rareware was bought by Microsoft. However, uh, they were allowed to create games for various Nintendo handheld systems since the Xbox was not competing with those systems. And thus, this game was created. Ah, yes, Klungo uses that brain of his rather than his brawn. It seems that his brain is really the only thing that is useful at all to any extent ever. This game actually has several references to Banjo Tooie in it, despite the fact that it, you know, chronologically happens before that game. For example, in official artwork, you can see that this uh, Grunty bot here has a um, Hag 1 license plate on its uh, stomach area, kinda. And of course, the Hag 1 is the final boss of Banjo Tooie. Oh, really now? Uh oh. What? Time travel? Grunty. You have time travel now. Gee whiz, Klingo might be more brilliant than we thought. Or maybe it's just her spell. It's hard to say. Oh dear. No, Kazooie! Kazooie, use all your beak attacks! Oh wait, no, you don't know how to fight solo yet. That comes in the, ne in the next game. Well! No, Kazooie! Also, you can see uh, their goldfish on the grill over there. Indeed! Oh my! So she's going to make sure that Banjo Kazooie would never meet, and yet she's going way into the past to the point where Boggy and apparently Mumbo aren't even born yet. That either means that Banjo and Kazooie are a lot older than these characters, or uh, she's altering the past to the extent that they might not even be born or something. Bimba Jimba. Oh, oh. 
Yeah. Bazai here will be our move teacher guy for this game. Alright, so notes work just as they did back in Banjo-Tooie, except they also kind of work like they do in Banjo-Kazooie, because as you can see here, we pick individual notes up rather than groups of five. Also, Banjo has the ability to jump and move around at free, freely, unlike he did at the very beginning of Banjo-Kazooie. Also, let's just grab this guy right here. Alright, now this game will have a combination of moves from both Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. Mostly Banjo-Kazooie stuff, but this is one from Banjo-Tooie. Indeed. Alright, so here we have the Pack Whack. This move requires you to stand still to use it. Like, right now, if we're moving around and we press the B button, it'll make us automatically stand still. But later on, we'll get attacks that um, activate while we're moving. And so, at that point, this attack becomes incredibly inconvenient to utilize. However, it is basically your most long-range move in the game. So that's something, I suppose. Quite mysterious. Well, you are a statue. <laughs> oh, Rareware. Always with your fourth wall. Alright, so it should be noted that the Jinja Oracle will give you a hint depending on how many Jinjos you have. However, um, let's say that you grab two Jinjos in a row without talking to the Oracle once you'll miss one of the hints, because basically it depends on exactly how many Jinjos you have. So if you had one and you talked to him, then you had three and you talked to him, you would miss the hint that you would get by having two and talking to him. So if you want to hear all the hints, go to him every time you collect a Jinjo. Occasionally his hints will be helpful, most of the time they'll be kind of obvious stuff. Now it should be noted, these purple things are whiplashes. In the original game, you couldn't really defeat whiplashes, whiplashes that easily. You had to utilize invincibility or just avoid them. In this game, pretty much anything kills them. They're pretty standard obstacles, they don't move around, they just sit there wiggling about. Alright, it's Jiggy Wiggy's Temple, much closer than it was in Banjo-Tooie. In fact, you'll notice that uh, Spiral Mountain is actually the hub world of this game. Like, uh, in the first game, Spiral Mountain was where you started, then you went to Gruntilda's Castle, and that's where you spent the rest of the game. In Banjo-Tooie, you started in Spiral Mountain, then went to the Isle of Hags and spent the rest of the game there. But in this game, no, it's just Spiral Mountain. It's the entire hub world. Of course, this means that Spiral Mountain is radically altered from any iteration that you've seen in the previous games, and any iteration that you'll see in future games as well. In fact, as of now, we haven't even seen the titular mountain yet. Uh, 
Alright, and so basically what he's saying is collect Jiggies to open worlds, just like Banjo, actually just like all the Banjo games. Alright, so let's get this started, shall we? The Crystal Jiggy looks much different in this game. Much less impressive, unfortunately. It pretty much just makes force fields disappear. Rather than creating a giant blue energy beam to destroy whatever gates may stand in your way. Yeah, it doesn't do that anymore. Anyway, these are, uh, Gruntlings. They're, uh, standard baddies. They only really appeared in the original game in, uh, Gruntilda's hub world, but they make their grand reappearance here. Oh boy, time to dive underwater. Alright, so underwater swimming in this game works in a rather different way than normal. You just find bubbles, press the R button, and now you're basically in another room. You don't really dive into the water on the main area that you see. There are these things right here that will give you air and such, and that's nice. Just press the R button to leave, and bam, we're back in the area, main area. Now it should be noted that this cliff here, whenever I walk off of it, I lose all momentum as I drop. However, if you jump off, you don't lose momentum. It's kind of a weird thing. I want to say it's a glitch in the game, but, um, I don't know. Maybe it was just bad programming or something. It's quite odd, that. There we go. Enough notes. All the notes, man. Alright, so in the original game, climbing was a standard move that you had to use before you even entered Gruntilda's castle. In this game, it's a move you learn in the first level. Unfortunately, you cannot climb trees in this game, which is what climbing was used for a lot in the original. But, uh, nope, not anymore. Boom! Orange Jinjo! And we have this chicken creature here. We'll talk to her later. Alright, this game introduced the double honeycomb. Which, um... Basically, it's just two, twice the honeycomb. And the question mark and exclamation point honeycombs do return. We'll see them later in the LP. Probably. I mean, I guess technically, technically speaking, we could go the entire LP without ever seeing a single question mark or exclamation point honeycomb as they do drop randomly. But I find that to be quite unlikely. Chances are we'll see them eventually. Oh my! Alright, so... Here we get to an annoying part of the game. Mini-games! There are three types of mini-games here, and you're gonna have to play each of them several times, basically. In this one, we go down a slide while collecting stuff. In this case, we have to collect these blue eggs. If we miss a single blue egg, we, mi we lose. We have to get them all. That actually makes it one of the harder versions of this particular minigame. Right at the- right off the bat, nonetheless. We'll play this game at least twice more, and in those versions, it'll be longer and there'll be more spike things to mess us up, but, well, we won't have to do perfect. Also, there's no fall damage in this game, which is something that I greatly appreciate. Especially since, sometimes it's hard to figure out where, you're, where you are on the uh, Y-axis. Oh my, Mumbo is here. 
Now, Mumbo mentioned that we would be seeing his ancestor. Um, that doesn't really sound correct, but it feels like there's a couple things that are inconsistent. But I'll mention that whenever we actually get to Mumbo. Alright, so here we have a new enemy. These guys, they fly around, and then they try to land on you and crush you and stuff. Supposedly, they're a combination of Gruntlings and Whiplashes. Yes, the Gruntweed. Hold it! There we go. Boo! Alright, so one thing that I'd like to mention is that in Banjo-Tooie, uh, Banjo and Kazooie were going out for revenge for killing bottles. But in this game, it's all about Gruntilda getting her revenge. Seems like the Banjo-Kazooie series is just a revenge series or something. And for some reason, this water is bubbly, but we can't swim in it. Now, we got another Jinjo, so let's go back to the Oracle. I want to show off all the hints that he has to give you in this game. I don't need any of the hints, but, you know, just to show everything off. Now, speaking of showing everything off, um, I might not get every single note in the game. Wow, what do you know? We already completed that, Jiggy. That wasn't... yeah. Anyway, yeah, I might not get every single note in the game. They're rather well hidden this time around, and collecting them all doesn't get you anything. Like, at all, seriously. There's no point to it. Once you have enough notes for the final move, you've got all the notes you ever need. With that said, I'll certainly make an effort to find them all. It's just, I haven't ever found them all. It seems like there's a couple that just elude me every time. Alright, another Jinja. As well as some notes down here. And, you know, if it was... If it was something like I was missing some Jiggies, or if I was missing some Jinjos, I'd be like, okay, I'll just look up a guide for that. But these are notes. There's a hundred in each area. I, it's really hard to figure out which ones I'm actually missing. <laughs> Indeed! But where are we going to find a mouse? And why can't it be a hamster? Hamsters are cooler. Now, right now, we're moving kind of slow. But don't worry, by the second world, we'll have a significant speed boost. Now, I really do like the uh, aesthetic of this area here, with this farm style. Alright, I think that, uh, I think that we're basically done with this room. Yep, alright, time to go to the other room. That's a thing to note, is that uh, most worlds are separated into, like, two different rooms, at least. Some have several, actually. Oh my! Time to find some chicks! Come on, Gruntweed! Yeah! It should be noted that Gruntweeds... Even whenever you get later moves in the game, the Pack Whack is still the best way to defeat them. Because some of your moves that you get later just bounce right off of them. Or rather, you just bounce right off of them whenever you use the move. Alright. So here we are swimming with all these whiplashes. Whiplashes are only dangerous whenever they're in the water. Conveniently, in Banjo-Kazooie, they only ever appeared in the water, or rather under the water. They were an aquatic enemy. Now, there was also another version of the Whiplash called the Whip Crack, and that was not an aquatic enemy. That was whenever you found them on land. They weren't any different from Whiplashes other than appearing on land and having a slightly different design, but Whip Cracks... Whip... Whip Cracks do not appear in this game. And now we're just swimming around to obtain these last couple notes. If I wanted to wait a really long time, I could go to this area later with something that we would get later. And by the way, you can't swim underwater here. 
But, um, you know, I can get all this stuff right now. And, with that, uh, it's about time to end this particular episode. So, with that said, I've been Mr. Gamepie. This has been Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie Grundy's Revenge Part 1. I'll see you all next time! Stay sufficiently awesome.